Shalom and welcome to day 35 of counting the Alma and we're back here in the synagogue and we're doing uh, one more count, one more blog as we go through these uh, Omer days. And I want to really kick off with something which happened a little while ago actually but it's been still rattling around my head of something which happened in Iceland. Um, something that was below the radar I suspect of quite a number of people but nevertheless was enough to scare the ones who read it. And it basically was this, that in Iceland they had just finished building one of the biggest uh, new temples of paganism in Europe. Up to hold thousands of people in the uh, capital. And the responses to this article were effectively head to the hills, the end is nigh, this is it, the, you know, the world is over, um, Europe is finished and so on and so on. Um, quite an interesting negative reaction to all of this. I didn't get that kind of reaction. And I remember thinking about this at the time and, and jostling some ideas about this, which is why it came across my desk um, just this week again, that what as Messiah Jews should we do about a situation like this? this? On the face of it, it sounds pretty horrific. It's the end of the Christian West, the post-religious stage. Maybe who knows what that means for the West in terms of we're moving into uh, new ideas and and new realms at this moment. And we know, of course, the abandonment of faith in the West is incredibly high. And it is quite difficult becoming more so as a believer in the West to survive right now. But I want to quote something which comes from Act 17 here from Shaul. Uh, and let's see what we can learn from his attitude when we, when we hear about these things. He says, Rav Shaul stood in the midst of the Areopagus and said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are very religious. For as I was passing through and considering the objects of your worship, I even found an altar with this inscription, To an unknown God. Therefore the one whom you worship without knowing, him I proclaim to you. God who made the world and everything in it, since he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands, nor is he worshipped with men's hands. He is made from one blood every nation of men, which is part of the Jewish universal uh, message that we have here. One blood from all nations of men to dwell on the face of the earth, that they would seek the Lord in the hope that they might grope for him and find him, though he is not far from each of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. It's an interesting sermon which Shaul brings um, in the middle of this Greek um, Hellenistic multiple deity situation. And I thought if that was us today, how many of us, as Messianic Jews, would wade into the next pagan temple and have the guts to stand there and start preaching the gospel and the good news. I'm not sure how many of us would have the guts to do that. I think there are a handful of people. I know um, some certainly in London, in Messianic Fellowship down there, used to go and preach the good news in a New Age festival. I, I remember reading about that a few years ago. That is the equivalent of what Rav Shaul is doing here. What is our attitude when we are faced with the decline of institutional faith and belief and our society begins to transform into something post-faith in terms of return to paganism rather than biblical faith? Do we head for the hills? Do we scream and shout? Do we become fearful? Or do we do as Rav Shaul did? For me personally, when I read about this Icelandic temple, there wasn't a kind of rejoicing in that sense, but more it was a sense of, wow, we are living in days of huge opportunity here. We are dealing with maybe the millennial generation, too maybe cliched to say that, but maybe that generation who are unchurched, not brought up in any kind of Christian faith or background. These are blank sheets of spiritual faith paper in each of these human beings that we are able to start writing our message onto. And when I've seen people in that Yeshua, if you have, who've been born again, um, who've come from no faith background, in fact, uh, just the opposite, but have come in unchurched in that way and come into Messianic Jewish faith as a believer, and therefore our synagogue is the first experience for them, as that element of believing faith, it's, I've been thrilled to see how it has transformed their lives and completely turned them around. The wonderful thing is there's no baggage. They don't have to unlearn things. They're not having to strip stuff off before they can start replacing it. 
um, understanding of what their life now is in Yeshua in Messianic Judaism. That's been a beautiful thing. For me, when I see these things, I think this is an opportunity. We mustn't be afraid in the marketplace of ideas, of faith. We must not, as Messianic Jews, be afraid to get out there, proclaim the good news, proclaim the truth of where we stand, and compete in that marketplace. We have got nothing to lose and everything to gain. When we preach the word of God and the truth of God, it is the power unto salvation for each and every one who will respond and call on the name of the Lord and reach out to him. Our word. Our truth that we are proclaiming here, the Messianic Jewish message of salvation in the scriptures, the Jewish scriptures, is more powerful, stronger than any other pagan faith, doctrine, philosophy or anything else which is out there, which is crowding that marketplace. We can have a confidence in Messiah Yeshua to stand and proclaim the good news and see many, many people saved, not just of our own people, but of, of Gentiles too, to see them saved and born again if they receive this message. So when we see these things being erected, when we hear about people crowding into Stonehenge for the summer solstice and we look at it and we go, oh, isn't this horrible? It's all coming to an end. For me, that says, let's get on with the job. We have work to do because what we proclaim is way more powerful than any bunch of people wearing sheets on a summer solstice and watching the sun come up or any other paganism or any other doctrine that they may come up with. Yeshua is the way to the Father. He is the truth. He is salvation for us, and we are not ashamed to proclaim it in these days. Bless you, thank you for listening, and I will see you again tomorrow. Tudorobah, Litrot.